A key device of the digital electronics age is the 555 timer because of its broad digital functionality and ability to withstand the test of time. The 555 timer was first introduced in the 1970s and not much has changed since then. A big reason the 555 digital timer is such a marvel is due to three of its operational modes, bistable, astable, and monostable. Each of these modes allows you to easily create an output signal that is some variation of this classic digital clock signal. The 555 timer allows you to modify this standard clock signal for custom output frequencies, uptimes, and downtimes. Before we experiment with the 555 timer, it's important to understand the reason for needing this 555 timer. Why similar to the 555 timer is a standard A-stable multivibrator circuit, which is a circuit that transitions back and forth between two states, similar to how digital electronics transition between 0 and 1. To build this circuit, from the parts kit we will need a breadboard, plus 9 volt connector, a 9 volt battery, two 2N3904 NPN transistors, two red LEDs, two one microfarad capacitors, some jumper wire from the wire kit, two one mega ohm resistors, and two 470 ohm resistors. This circuit is fairly complicated, so please follow the circuit diagram on the screen if the video moves too quickly. First, the breadboard power and ground bus lines are connected to both sides of the breadboard. Next, the two 2N3904 NPN transistors are added to the breadboard. Two wires are connected to the base pin of each transistor. Two capacitors connect from that wire to the, the collector pin of the NPN transistors. Next, the emitter pin of the transistor is connected directly to ground. Now, the 470 ohm resistor is connected to the collector pin of each transistor. Two LEDs connect that 470 ohm resistor to plus 9 volt power. Finally, the two 1 mega ohm resistors connect from the transistor's base pin to the plus 9 volt power. When you power on the circuit, one LED will turn on and the other will be off. Then they'll switch states again and again back and forth. Thus you have built an A-stable multivibrator circuit. Let's test one thing about this circuit to give you an idea for how to control the speed of the LED flashing. Change the capacitors to a larger 100 microfarad value. Now you will see that both LEDs flash more slowly than before. What we will shortly find out is that the 555 timer shares a similar property to that of the previously seen A-stable multivibrator circuit. The main difference is that the 555 timer's on-off rates can be closely controlled and easily calculated. But before we get into that, let's take a closer look at what the 555 timer has. Every 555 timer has 8 pins, and each of those pins has a specific purpose aside from standard power and ground input there's the trigger, output, reset, discharge, threshold, and control voltage pin. For a quick crash course in the 555 timer, the most important pins for what we'll be looking at are the trigger, output, and reset pins. Trigger is the pin which will tell output to change between a digital zero or zero volt output and a digital one or about nine volt output. Output is where the actual output comes from, as you would expect. And finally, reset is the pin that can change the whole 555 timer back to its initial state. For what we're doing, we'll always disable reset. Now, let's use the 555 timer to build an A-stable multivibrator. You will need a 9-volt battery connector, a 9 volt battery, red LED, one microfarad capacitor, 555 timer, 
two one mega ohm resistors, one 470 ohm resistor, all from the parts kit, and some jumper wire from the wire kit. Here is a schematic of the circuit we are going to build. Refer back to it if the video moves too quickly. First, we'll place the 555 timer in the middle of the breadboard. Next, we'll connect pin 2 and pin 6 together. Now, we'll connect pin 1 to ground. With some yellow wires, we'll connect pin 4 and pin 8 to plus 9 volt power. Next, we'll connect a 1 mega ohm resistor from plus 9 volt power to pin 7 of the 555 timer. The other 1 mega ohm resistor connects from pin 7 to pin 6. The one microfarad capacitor connects to pin 2 of the 555 timer and the other side to ground. Lastly, a 470 ohm resistor and LED are connected to the 555 timer's output at pin 3. And now, when you power the circuit up, the LED will start blinking right away at a common interval. Just like with the experiment from the introduction, pull out the 1 microfarad capacitor and replace it with the 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Notice that now the LED blinks much faster. This is happening because a capacitor's value will determine how long it takes to charge with electricity, much like how long it takes water to fill a small bucket compared to a very large bucket. Up to this point, we have been more or less just blindly following a do-as-I-say design approach, and we haven't been intelligently designing or oscillating or blinking circuits. There's actually a whole host of theory behind how to control how fast the oscillations or LED blinking occurs. So now, let's take a look at how we can control the output of the 555 timer. First, we'll look at the circuit we just built. We used two resistors and a capacitor to tell the 555 timer when to turn on and off. The three parameters we can closely control are called frequency, which is how many times per second the output turns off and on, the on time, which is the length of time the signal stays at digital 1 during one period, and the off time, the length of time the output stays at digital 0 during one period. If we take the values we used in the previous experiment, 1 mega ohm, 1 mega ohm, and 1 microfarad, the formula for the on time is R1 plus R2 times 0 0.693 times C, and the formula for off time is 0 0.693 times R2 times C. If we plug in those values, we get that the on time is 1.386 seconds, and that the off time is 0 0.693 seconds. This tells us the period is about 2 seconds by adding the on time and the off time together. And we find that the frequency is about 0 0.5 Hz by dividing 1 second by the period. Using these two formulas, you can calculate the result for the different R1, R2, C components that you use. Being able to control these on and off times is extremely important for digital circuits because when dealing with digital signals, the timing is definitely everything. Milliseconds and microseconds can be the difference between erroneous data and real data. 555 timers are not as visible in commercial electronics as they once were, and now they tend to only be inside simple and redundant electronics. Some uses of the 555 timer are as one-shots or as simple clock generators for digital logic ICs. Here are a few examples of projects where precise digital timing was used. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Next time, it is time to take a break from building and start drawing. In lesson 10, we will take a look at all the circuit symbols, the proper way to draw schematics, and the world of datasheet documentation.